Stamper is Deb Valder here, your fun Stamper's journey coach, and today I'm bringing you another product spotlight on stenciling. And they are such a beautiful medium to use on your cards, on wood, on just about everything. Stencils are so versatile. So let me just show you a couple of the stencils that we have um, in our new catalog. We do have some older ones also, but um, I wanted to show you a couple of the brand new ones that we have. So we have this one right here, it's called Wallpaper, and it comes in one great big stencil. But what I love to do is I like to take them, because there's four of them in there, what I like to do is I like to take and cut them up. So what I do is I take um, these four right here, and I cut them up into four individual ones. So you get um, four for the price of one. That means you get more bang for your buck. Okay, let me show you these. These are um, the Flower Power. And they're, like I said, there's four stencils in there. So this one right here is our little um, rose. And right here we have a little, I don't know what you call that one. We have some roses here and we have this beautiful one right here. So like I said, what I did was I cut it up into fours. Let me just show you what they look like um, on paper. They are just so magnificently beautiful. All right, so here's the rose. Look at that, it just gives it such a chalky look. For this particular one, I used our um, re-inkers, so it kind of gives you a, a dual purpose for our re-inkers also. Here is the little rose, which is right here. Okay, so this is the little rose. That one goes with that one. Here's our little rose. Here is our little burst, and here are these little cute flowers right here. So that one is called Flower Power. The next one I want to show you is called Wallpaper, and again, it comes in one large one, and we have uh, the little shells right here. We have the little linen look right here. We have the beautiful um, Hawaiian lookish um, leaves right here. And then we have this beautiful, what I call the peacock feather. And let me just show you what these look like. Um, and again, they are absolutely magnificently gorgeous. All right, so here is what the linen one looks like. Here is what the, what I call the peacock feather. Look at the shells, they are just so beautiful. And then here is the Hawaiian, um, the tropical leaf. These are just absolutely fantastic. So those are our large ones. I cut those up into to smaller ones. We also have some that are, um, I believe these are six by six or eight by eight. Let's take a look. These are six by six, all right? This one is one of our brand new ones, the cement tile. And this one right here is the buffalo check. And this is what I did with the Buffalo check. I did do a video on this one, so go out and make sure you look at it. And then we also have some very large ones, and um, this is one that I did with the, with the large stencil. So let's get started. I'm gonna show you how to use these. I'm gonna grab the Buffalo check first, and we are going to do, um, I think we'll start out with our re-inkers. So let me just take some of my paper, and I like to adhere the paper down a little bit, so I'm just gonna take some of our easy glide take the paper put a little bit on the back put my finger to it to get some of the sticky off all right and then just lay it on my grid sheet all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our um, stencil now what i like to do is to designate somehow some way to show you that the stencil is right side up this one happens to have a place to hold your hand. So what I do for the right-handed people is I put um, the little sticker that way. If you're left-handed, the sticker is this way. The reason I do that, and the reason you're watching these product um, spotlight videos is to show you some of the, the neat techniques and things that I've learned, um, some good, some bad. Use what you can and then throw away what you don't need. But um, what I like to do is to make sure that I'm always stenciling on the right, the same side so that if I have more than one card I'm doing all at the same time, I'm not gonna use it this way once and then this way the second time um, because all of this um, ink that's on here will get on here by putting it this way. Or if you're doing this in a class or with multiple people, they all know to, to actually stencil on this side and not this side. I hope that makes a little bit of sense and helps you out a little bit um, in making sure that everything stays clean. Now remember, stencils can be used with re-inkers, which is what I'm gonna show you right now. You can use um, our liquid color with it. You can use our splashes with it. You can use our paint with it. You can use our pan pastels with it. You can use our modeling paste with it. There's so many things that you can use with stencils. And that's what I wanna show you in this product spotlight are some of the different ways um, that you can use them. 
So let me just grab one of our daubers. This is the large dauber. And then I'm going to take um, just a block and um, some of my reinker. Now you would do this the exact same way with the liquid color, the both of these. I wanted the um, chambray shirt, so that's why I'm gonna be using the um, blue um, chambray shirt reinker rather than one of our um, liquid colors. But these are both done the same way. So if I was using the liquid color, I would just put it on here and sponge away just like I'm gonna do for the reinker. So remember, if it is a reinker, you do need to shake it up so that um, all of that infusioned ink um, comes together. All right, so now what I did was I just put my reinker onto my block and I'm gonna soak it up with, with um, my little um, dauber. Now this dauber already has a lot of ink on it, so it's not um, sucking up the ink as much as it would if it was totally dry. Now one of the things you don't wanna do with this is to scrub, because if you scrub, it's gonna go underneath. What I like to do is to just take and, and dab it and turn it, all right? And that way there, you're just kind of dabbing on the top and you're not getting anything underneath. All right. So for this row right here, we don't even need to work on that little spot right there because that's a, a dead spot. All right. And I am using this the left-handed way. Normally I would have this on this side so my hand could hold it, but I was showing you about the left and the right side. So it's okay, all is good but I am using it with the, with the little happy faces right side up. And see what I'm doing, I'm not scrubbing it. So if I have too much ink um, on it, I can still take in, I can still take and not get it underneath. And by having my paper um, adhered underneath onto the grid paper, my paper is not slipping, all right? Make sure you get that last row. And what I did was I did try to center it, center it up and down, side to side, straight back and forth. Now, like what I just did was I moved it. You can always go back and re-align. Um, See, you can just realign it. And then if you need to touch up anything, you can do that. All right. Now remember our re-inkers um, dry a little bit. Oops, I did forget some right here. Um, our re-inkers dry a little bit lighter so make sure that you get it as dark as you want it let me just lift that up so that you can see it isn't that beautiful now i didn't do the top part of it and again like i said if you want to reline it up you can do that uh, right here and it just works so nicely there we go all righty so i'm just going to line that up like that i'm going to go back up here on the top and just add some color to the ones i forgot up here on top all right, and you notice that nothing bled underneath it by doing the little dabbing and turning, and that way there, you don't have a big old mess when you pick it up. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? And like I said, you can use anything, uh, any of these colors with the dauber, okay? You can use either the, the um, color, uh, liquid color or the, um, the re-inkers, all right? So that's number one. And you can always, you always reuse these. I just have a little container that I put them in and I just reuse those. All right, so there's that. Okay, now I'm back and we're gonna do some pan pastels. So right here, I have two of our new colors. So I have copper and I have um, the rose gold and I have one of our sponge daubers. I'm gonna take another one of our pieces of paper and I'm going to grab some of my Easy Glide and lay that down so we can anchor it and use. I'm going to use the large rose, rose on this one. And again, we're not going to scrub. We are going to just kind of uh, dab and twist. So I'm just going to grab just a little bit of the, the uh, gold. I'll start at the top. And I'm just going to twist. That's all there is to this. The pan pastels are just so easy to use. You want to make sure you don't get too much on it because you're going to get all that dust and you don't want it to get underneath it. We'll blow away the rest of it at the end. Just kind of smoothing it out here. Now 
and sometimes picking the medium to color it with has to do with the size of the stencil also. A very intricate stencil um, wouldn't be as good with the pan pastels, I don't believe, as it is with um, a larger stencil. There we go. And then we can embellish it as we like afterwards. So I'm just going to take this, just blow away the extra dust and look at, I don't know if you can see just how beautiful that is. It's got this shimmer to it because of the pan pastel. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. Now for something that is um, this big and has that much pan pastel on it, I would definitely take um, my hairspray and I do that just because um, I want to set the um, pan pastel. So I'm just going to take it very quickly, spray it, and that just kind of sets it. There it is. Beautiful. Now all of the stencils are um, water soluble except for the reinker. I just take with my reinkers, I just take my cleaning cloth and my um, cleaner and just clean those off. These I just run under water. That's it. All right, so that is our pan pastels. So, so very pretty. Make sure you try pan pastels with your stencils. So now what I'm anxious to show you is our splashes. These are so much fun to use. Um, they are, uh, they come in many, many colors. You have a little guard that goes on here to make sure that when it's not being used, uh, you, you um, aren't spraying things that you're not supposed to be spraying. So I'm just gonna take that off. You wanna make sure when you use your splashes that you, um, you shake them up nicely because all of the goodness is here on the bottom. So that's all of the uh, metallic part of it. You'll hear that little, um, you'll hear that little BB on the bottom. And when you know that that is um, all shook up, that's a song, isn't it? I'm all shook up. Um, you're going to take and know that the bottom is all nice and and uh, mixed in with all the other colors. So here's one that I did when I just splashed it. So basically, what I did was I took a box. I laid it down, I laid this up against my box. I like to lay this on the, the back side of it and just go and spray it, all right? But for this one, what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that the spray goes down on top of my stencil. So let me just grab a piece of paper. I am gonna take a little bit of adhesive and glue it to the bottom of my box right here. I'm gonna add my stencil to it and I'm gonna take my spray. I'm gonna just test it. Yep, it's all working real good. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the spray up. Let me see if I can do it so that you can see it. I'm gonna take the spray, I'm gonna hold it up and just spray straight down. Now, when you do splashes, you will get some seepage. Let me just show you what I mean by that. When you go to do this, it will, it will sleep, seep out just a little bit. So let's just take and lift this up. And I like to use my little spatula here so I don't get all dirty. But um, it really does work out nicely when you're spraying. And that's why you wanna take and put a box on it. But you will get some splatter. There's, there's just really no, because this is such a spray, but it gives it a whole different look. And I just think it makes it um, look even that much prettier. So this one right here is um, our Rustic Rose Splash. And this one is our new, um, this one is called Chambray Shirt. Just so very, very pretty. Just a fast way to use our stencils. And it's a, just another way to use our stencils using one of our splashes. All right, so let's go on to the next one. Okay, so now we have our gel press and we're gonna use some paint. So let's take this top off, and this is our gel press. I'm going to take some of our acrylic paint, and we are going to use our gel press. Okay, so we're gonna just take and put a couple of drops on our gel press of the different colors of ink. So I just grabbed a couple, I hope they're coordinating here. These are pretty together, yep. And I think I have some whipped cream right here. Alrighty. Now what we're gonna do is to blend those together with our brayer. Oh, so pretty. 
All right, we're going to lay down our stencil. I think I'll use this one. And we need a piece of cardstock to go on top of that. And that's why with my with my gel press, I always like to take and um, outline it with a marker to show you where you can start and stop with the stencils. All right, and I'm just going to brayer that on and lift it up. And look at how beautiful that came out. That is just so very, very pretty. So that is using our stencils. Okay, let me just show you one more time. Just absolutely beautiful using the gel press, using the stencils, and using our brayer. It just came out so very, very pretty. So for my next demo, I'm gonna use modeling paste. And what I did was took some of our chambray shirt um, cardstock and I took our white modeling paste. Now you can, you can um, color this modeling paste any color that you want. Um, I'm just gonna leave it as white. If you have um, your modeling paste and it's been around for a while, just add a little bit of water to it and um, it's just as good. I always leave um, some uh, uh, saran wrap in there so that um, it does keep it moist a little bit longer. But we are going to need our modeling paste. We're going to need our stencil. And I'm just gonna use the, I'm gonna use the little um, shells here. At least that's what I think they are. <laughs> Let's take a little piece of our adhesive to put on the bottom so it doesn't move while we're doing this. We're gonna lay this right over here on the top of it. And then we are going to just start and what I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of this, start just here in the middle, and lay it on there. Making sure you just keep it nice and flat as you go along. It's kind of like spreading it with a cake, spreading it, frosting a cake. Like I said, if your modeling paste gets a little bit dry, just add a little bit of water to it and it, you'll end up using the whole jar and not letting any of it dry out. And you'll notice that I just keep flattening it out as I go along. This is just such a pretty look. Giving it texture with using your stencils, I'm telling you, stenciling is so versatile. You can get so many different looks just depending on what medium you use to color or texture. There we go. I just want to make sure I get all the sides and then just smooth it out all the way. Just like you were doing if you were doing a cake. All right, put this in here like that. Make sure you put the top back onto your modeling paste and you'll be good for the next time. You wanna make sure that you clean these things off right away because they will dry and adhere to your piece. So you do wanna clean them up pretty, pretty quickly. Grab this, lift this up, and look at how beautiful that is. Done with our stencils. Now that'll dry nice and flat as soon as it dries, and there are your stenciling. So I hope you like what I did with the um, stencils and kind of showed you a few things that you might not have known. I really want you to go and take a look at all of our stencils. Um, besides the things that I've done with that, you can use stencils for wood. You can stencil on wood. You can stencil on fabric. You can stencil on cakes and cookies. You just put the stencil over the top and you use some powdered sugar. <coughs> it's just a really nice way to do it. You can use them for tattoos and quilling, um, and you can even use them on nails. Another thing that I've used um, my stencils for is to etch on glass. So I have taken um, this little glass right here. I've used some of our, um, just different, there's different um, products that you, you can use to etch on glass, but I've done it for a lot of different things, um, and I just absolutely love it. Um, again, using our stencils, you can take and you can etch on glass. You can take our stencils and um, etch on glass. Um, it's just a wonderful thing. So let's just kind of recap right here. Um, this was done with our pan pastels. 
Uh, this one was done with, um, this one was done with, I think, well, all of these right here were done with our either reinkers or liquid color. These were, look at how beautiful they are. Just absolutely gorgeous. Um, and these are some of our brand new stencils. This one right here is different than this one because this one is done with, um, you know, just rubbing it with our, uh, our daubers. And um, this one was done with our uh, modeling paste. Absolutely gorgeous. Done with our splashes, done with our um, gel press and our, our paint, our, 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 uh, our acrylic paint. Again, um, splashes. Just such a beautiful, absolutely beautiful technique. Make sure you check out the stencils. Make sure you try them. They're so much fun. And if you get the ones that are four to a pack, you know, cut them down to size, you get more bang for your buck. I hope you enjoyed my presentation for today. This is a product spotlight on stencils. You take care. Have a great day. And thank you so much for stopping by. Bye-bye.